art of fencing is involving grace in terms of movement, memorizing forms. So what we pride ourselves on is learning a lot about uh, how to move properly, learning more about the mechanics of our body, making fluid, uh, concrete actions, uh, improving our balance, improving our awareness of everything like that. It's about position, body, perfect body position, elegant movement, very much about agility, being able to move, create with your body, just as an artist would with a palette. So it's, it's really much about moving, distance, things like that, creating the perfect touch, setting up in proper position to score a touch. Your footwork and handwork are going to be directly interrelated. Where your feet go, your hand goes. Where your hand goes, your feet goes. So you've got to be very skillful at moving your hand and your arms, as well as moving your legs. So what's very difficult about fencing is it's kind of like pitching in baseball, swinging in golf. Everything has to be going right. You can, you, can have, you can outsmart your opponent, you can outmove your opponent, but if you miss, you fail, right? So everything has to be working properly. You can't make any mistakes. I feel like it lets you use the best of your abilities. As some other sports don't, I really feel like you're able to put it, put it all out in fencing sometimes. You have to find that point between calm and anger, right in between. That's the only way to really control and, and be focused and be very accurate in what you're doing. And fencing does that. Fencing obviously started with warfare back in the Middle Ages. In the 17th and 18th centuries, it became a sport in France. Um, the first weapon to be uh, used as a sport was the foil. It was developed to practice dueling. Um, the dueling sword became what was now called the epée. Um, and the saber is derived from the cavalry weapon used at the time. And uh, there was a big tradition in 17th, 18th, 19th century Europe uh, for sport fencing, primarily based on the foil. Um, very much a gentleman's sport, uh, very much with a lot of formulaic rules, uh, very high end. In the first Olympics, modern Olympics, 1896, fencing was one of the first five sports to be at the Olympics. Um, and you know this because there's one of the sports that's at the Olympics is modern pentathlon. It had the five original sports. Fencing, horseback riding, running, swimming, and shooting. So fencing was one of the originals and it's been in the Olympi every Olympics since then. All three weapons are fenced in the Olympics and it's now fenced by both men and women. Uh, men always fenced uh, all three weapons at the Olympics. Uh, women only started out with foil. Uh, as the quality has gotten better, and that's a great thing, uh, we've added epee and saber for the women as well. Fencing as a science is involving its uh, thinking aspects of uh, challenging your opponent almost like a chess game. It's about tactics, firm tactics. You have to have an idea of what you're going to do, what your opponent is going to do, how to counteract that, how to set up so that your touch is here and not somewhere on the other side of the strip. Every touch progresses to another touch. Uh, just as in science, every experiment progresses to another experiment. You don't know what anyone else is going to do in a given moment. Um, and if you're at the same level uh, physically that someone else is, really you have to start using your mind to win bouts. And uh, that involves, you know, patterns, uh, playing the odds, you know, doping out your opponent. Um, there are a lot of books written on, on scientific aspects of fencing, strategies, and so on. Fencing's a, a thinking sport. Um, it's a sport that uses, encompasses, really does encompass both mind and body. Um, you're constantly thinking about what your next move is and what your opponent's move is. So if you want a sport where you have to put all parts of yourself to the test, that's fencing. You can also see exactly how you are getting better, by how many points you are getting, but what percent you're getting better. You can make a statistical chart if you wanted to on how you have improved, which is amazing. I love it. It's also a game that uh, taught me that losing is actually, there's nothing wrong with losing. It's actually by losing that you, that, that you learn more. The rules in each weapon are different. For Epe, the Epe is the most simple rules. In Epe, the entire body is the target, head to toe. And the only rule is hit the other guy first. Okay, if we both hit it at the same time, we each score. So it's really like a duel. Um, and uh, best of five points, so whoever gets the five points wins. The rule is in foil, if someone attacks, the other person must defend. 
you cannot score a point if your opponent is attacking. So this kind of complex thing of right of way involved. So it's like baseball. There's someone, a referee's watching to see who has the right of way to be able to score. Saber has right of way just like foil, and the target area is everything above the waist. So the head, the arms, the chest. Um, Saber is a little different in that um, you can hit with the side of the blade as well as the point. So in foil nappa you must hit with the point, in Saber you can slash them as well. It's a sport where you can't, you can't miss anything and that, that sense of having a full concentration of that flow is really, uh, it's addictive, it's, 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 it's great. Um, and what's great as a coach is when you see kids really start getting a passion for it. They could, you know, sometimes you have kids who are coming four or five times a week to fencing. You know, this is my favorite thing in the world to do outside of school. You know, then you, you see a smile on their face after a lesson. Then it's really rewarding. It's every part of my life, um, whether it's coaching here or even going to watch it. I just got back from going to Chicago to watch one of the World Cups for Saber. Um, you know, anything that you could do with fencing, I, I'm, I'm in the sport. Fencing is, uh, is extremely exciting to me because you, you basically bring up a new level of focusing. Uh, you have to be humble. Uh, you, you're going to get hit, so you have to accept it and uh, you have to learn from it. I really set some very high goals for myself and it just, it's, fencing is really helping me with my everyday life. It's really um, it's, it's driving me. It's a great sport. Um, it's one that you can really do for the rest of your life. Um, you know, I've gone to the Y and I've met guys who fence for Penn, you know, and they're 75 years old and they still get up and they fence and they go down the strip. You have to eliminate all sorts of thoughts when you're fencing. You can't think of what's going on at home, you can't think of what's going on at work. You can't, you know, you just have to look at the other person in the eye, try not to concentrate on their blade or their weapon, and just look at them and like, have a feeling of what's going on. What are they trying to do? Where are they trying to go? So it's, it's, it's an amazing sport. It's, it's really an amazing sport. Internationally, we're looking at the United States becoming a stronger and stronger presence in fencing. We were a laughing stock in fencing in the 20th century. The 21st century, the United States is a serious competitor that can meddle in any of the weapons and is seen as, as a real deal. So we're really taking from the Europeans a lot of their, their luster. Because obviously swords are, are obsolete. So why should we do that? Well, because there's, the sport isn't obsolete. The, as, the fundamental aspects of that are still important and are still important in forming someone's uh, psyche, their, their, their drive and everything. So I think it's going to be immensely important even if the world where we have lasers and, and spaceships and everything else, I think fencing will continue on into the future.